Well, hey, everyone. God bless you. It's Fred Krupp coming to you from the Healing Rooms Apostolic Center here in Santa Maria, California. Hey, thank you for joining me today. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the righteousness of faith. Did you know that there are four kinds of righteousness and only one of the four will make you right with God, keep you right with God, and get you into heaven. So I'm going to be sharing about that. This is actually part one of that overcomers understand the righteousness of faith. So I'm just thanks for joining me. Make sure you go to my YouTube channel, which is different than the one you're watching on right now, which is Fred Kropp, K-R-O-P-P. Make sure when you get there, you subscribe, click the bell, and click like. All right. Hey, before we jump in, uh, just coming right up now real soon, we're going to be doing a seminar here at the Healing Rooms in Santa Maria called Activate. And we want to invite you to come and join us. It's all about activating the greater one that lives in you, activating your identity in Christ, activating your love for people. And so it's not just going to be a teaching. It's going to be an impartation. Everyone who comes is going to be blessed. Make sure you click on the link in the chat or click on the link below and uh, go to Eventbrite and make sure you register for the seminar. Again, a half-day seminar coming up July 23rd, Saturday. July 23rd. All right. So you know what? The Bible says, uh, the, Paul, the Apostle Paul actually said this in Romans 5 and verse 17. He said this. He said, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life. So if you and I are going to reign in life, then we have to reign by the gift of righteousness. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me just pray now and let's ask the Holy Spirit to speak to us and let's talk about what righteousness is is and what are the four kinds of righteousness that most people uh, identify with. So Father, I thank you once again. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. I thank you that you are touching people even as I am sharing. Healings are coming. Freedom is coming, blessing is coming, favor is coming upon them because they're hearing the word of God, which you said will not return void without accomplishing what it's sent to do. Bless your word today, not just my words, but bless your word, Father, and make it apply to our lives and bear fruit that remains. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can you say amen to that? Well, the first thing we want to identify is what is righteousness. Righteousness means right standing before God. That means you are right before God. Your sins have been forgiven. You have no, there's nothing between you and God. Righteousness also means moral perfection. To be perfect morally. Wow, that's a huge thing to strive for, right? Righteousness means the state of being justified, just as if you had never sinned, justified before God. And so here it is. There are four kinds of righteousness. Uh, I was just walking in my neighborhood several weeks ago, ran into a lady in my neighborhood who I never met before, and uh, she started talking, shared about some of the needs in her life, and I offered to pray for her, and she said, oh, would you pray for me? And I said, yeah, but let me explain something to you before I pray. I said, did you know that there are four kinds of righteousness, and only one of them will make you right with God, keep you right with God, and get you into heaven? Well, she was all ears. And so I began to share with her what I'm going to share with you right now, and that is that the four kinds of righteousness, and you know what? Three out of the four will not make you right with God. The first kind of righteousness, which if you're a Christian, you certainly have heard of this, and that is the righteousness of the law. There are 613 laws in the Old Testament. And so, uh, and the Bible says, you, if you don't keep every one of those laws, then you are going to be judged, uh, condemned by the law. So you have to keep the law perfectly. Uh, in James chapter 2, James writes and says, For whoever, whoever keeps the whole law but fails on one point has become guilty of all. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails on one point will become guilty of all of it all. Uh, In Galatians chapter 3, Paul writes and says, all those who rely on the works of the law 
are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law to do them. So here it is. It's the, the fact, here's the fact it's true, and that is if you are trying to be righteous by the works of the law, you're going to fail. Because the Bible says it is impossible to keep the law perfectly when you just try to keep the law, right? And so some people think, well, I'm pretty good. You know, I've kept most of the Ten Commandments. You know, uh, you know have you ever told a lie? Have you ever lusted, you know, after someone? Have you ever coveted someone else's property? Um, you know, have you ever, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, said something negative about a friend or whatever? If you've done any of those things, then you are, you have broken the law. That's right. If you don't keep the Sabbath holy, the Bible says you're going to you bring law. If you haven't honored your father and mother, then you're going to break the law. And if you break one point, you become guilty of it all. So the first kind of righteousness is the righteousness of the law, which by which Israel proved they could not keep the law. Even though the law is righteous, the law is good, they could not keep it. The second kind of righteousness that a lot of people uh, would say or want to make their righteous is what I call the righteousness of association. That's what I, when I, what I mean by that is when, you know, you, because you have someone in your family or some relative that was a good Christian that followed God, that is a godly person, that somehow by your association with them, that makes you righteous before God. Or another way to look at it is righteousness by I attend church. I pay tithes. My family are Christians. You know, I've read the Bible. Uh, do you know that none of those things will make you right with God? Now, those are all good things to do, uh, but when you, you cannot be righteous by someone else's righteousness or just some act of righteousness. Uh, in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 9, Jesus said, and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Because the Pharisees, you see, who were not fair, you see, the Pharisees were claiming that their righteousness was based on, that they were the children of Abraham. And he was saying, it's not the children of Abraham that are right, right with God. It's those that are and we'll explain that in just a moment, what the, what the righteousness is that is acceptable before God. The, so the first kind of righteousness was the righteousness of the law. The second kind is righteousness by association. The third kind of righteousness is self-righteousness. Now, I would say many, uh, most people in the world, if you were to ask them, would God let you into his heaven uh, or why would God let you into heaven? They would probably say, well, I'm a good person. And so, okay, if you're a good person, good in comparison to what? Uh, the problem is that you have to be perfect to come before God. And so self-righteousness is us proclaiming our own goodness and our own righteousness. And a lot of people, we just justify ourselves by thinking, well, I'm not a mass murderer you know, I, I, I haven't, you know, I'm not a wife beater or I haven't done evil things and so on. So somehow I must be okay and I'm going to be okay when I face God on judgment day. So uh, self-righteousness is based on a scale of comparison. And so if I would, you know, say, well, you know, if I say to you, uh, how righteous are you on a scale of one to 10? Well, uh, let's say that Mother Teresa and Billy Graham were an eight, all right? Where would you be uh, in on the scale of righteousness? You know, I'd probably put myself uh, in, in my own righteousness as a minus two, right? And so we base on self-righteousness, we base our righteousness on how we can, I'm not as bad as my neighbor, I'm not as bad as, you know, that evil person I saw on TV or whatever, and it's based on comparison, Self-righteousness says, I'm not a bad person, so I'm good enough for God to let me into heaven. So self-righteous people justify their own actions and attitudes while condemning others. 
Now, the problem with that is Romans chapter 3, verse 10, Paul says, there is none righteous, none righteous, no, not one. There is none righteous, no, not one. Right, one. In Isaiah 64, 6, it says, For all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous deeds are a filthy garment or filthy rags. So the, the best of our righteousness compared to God's holiness and God's purity is complete, utter unrighteousness. So we've talked about three kinds of righteousness. The righteousness of the law, by which you have to keep it perfectly, if you don't, you're condemned. The righteousness of association, which we know, understand that we cannot be righteous because we are connected with some other people that are righteous. That doesn't make us righteous. And thirdly, we talked about self-righteousness, where we believe that we're not bad people, we're good people, therefore God must accept us, okay? Now, the fourth kind of righteousness is the only righteousness that will make you right with God and get you into heaven uh, when you die and go stand before the judgment seat of God and the judge, judgment seat of Christ. And what is that righteousness? It is the righteousness of faith. That's right. Again, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So what is the righteousness of faith? Well, it tells us in Galatians chapter 6, verse 15, a chapter, uh, excuse me, uh, not Galatians, but Genesis chapter 15 and verse 6. It says, and Abraham believed the Lord and the Lord counted it to him as righteousness because of his faith. James 2.23 says this, and the scripture was fulfilled saying that Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. So the righteousness of faith is based on believing in something. It, it, he, Paul, uh, Abraham had the righteousness of faith. Uh, it says he believed God and God accounted to him as for him as righteousness. And so here it is. Um, in order to be righteous, uh, we, we have to be born into righteousness. Now, here's the fact. And there's a lot of people don't get this. Most people think that we sin because we're, we, you know, I mean, we um, uh, are sinners because we sin. But you know, that's not true. We're sinners because we're, we sin because we're sinners. Uh, listen to this. We're born into sin and we are born again into righteousness. Now, the fact is this. Adam and Eve, the first people on the planet, sinned. And it says, when they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and disobeyed God, sin entered into the world. And every person since Adam and Eve that is born is born into sin. In John 3.3, 3, Jesus said this, Truly, truly, I say to you, I, I say to you, Jesus said, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What does he mean, born again? And then he explains it to uh, this man. He was talking to Nicodemus, and Nicodemus came to him and said, we know you're from God, and, uh, and, and can you tell us how you're doing all these miracles? And Jesus looked at him and said, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so Nicodemus said, well, what do you mean? Go back in my mother's womb and come back out. And Jesus said to him, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water, which means natural childbirth and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God for that which is born of flesh is flesh and that which is born of spirit is spirit. Are you seeing this? So what he was, when we're born of the flesh, we're born of Adam right? We're born under the, under the, the uh, lineage of Adam. And when we're born of water or born natural birth, we're born into sin. And that's why Jesus said, if you're going to be right with God, you have to be born again. You have to have a second birth. Romans 5, 19, it says this, it says for, Paul says, as through one man's 
disobedience, the many were made sinners, even so through the obedience of the one, talking about Jesus, many will be made righteous. And so through Adam's disobedience, we all have become sinners. That's right. We're all born into sin. But through Jesus, through his act of righteousness, by becoming sin on our behalf, hanging on the cross, paying the price for our sin, for his all, and he lived a perfect life, never sinned, through his act of righteousness, his act of righteousness and act of obedience, many are made righteous. So what does that mean? We are sinners not because we sinned, we sin because we were born sinners, that's right. You know, if you're, you get upset with people out there that don't know Jesus and you say, you know, look at those people sinning. What terrible things they're doing. Well, what do you expect them to do? They were born into sin. People that are sinners are going to sin. So our old man before Christ was a sinner. You probably have heard people say, um, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. That's who I am. Well, that's not totally true. Once you are born again, you become a new creation, uh, the Bible says. You're a new creature in Christ Jesus. The old person you were was a sinner. The new person you are is the righteousness of God in Christ. So our old man was a sinner. Our new man is created in righteousness and holiness. Where did I get that? Well, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22 the Apostle Paul writes this. He says, Now I want you to put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Did you notice this thing about the old man and the new man? He said the old man was corrupt, deceitful, full of lust, but the new man is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. That's why the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, a new person, a new man, a new woman. So what am I saying by all this? I'm saying that we are righteous not because we do righteous works, although if, but we do righteous works. Let me say this again. We are righteous not because we do righteous works, we do righteous works because we are righteousness. You know, Jesus talked about, you know, a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. And so no matter how hard a bad tree tries to produce good fruit, it cannot. He says that a good tree produces good fruit, good fruit. So it's not the fruit that changes the tree. It's the tree that determines the fruit. Did you get that? It's not the fruit that determines the tree. It's the tree that determines the fruit. So if we're going to have good fruit, we have to be a new tree. And in fact, the Bible says in Isaiah says we are we are clothed with righteousness. We are the planting of the Lord. We are, in fact, it says this, we are trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. This is Isaiah chapter 61. If you go back there and look at that. So here it is. Galatians 2.16 says, knowing, Paul says, that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith. I mean, justified means just as if I've never sinned. I have right standing with God and not by the works of the law. He says, for by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. And then in Romans 3, 21, Paul says, now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. So what is it saying? We're talking about we're not righteous because we do righteous work. So you people are trying to become right with God by doing good things. Hey, I helped somebody. I, I gave some money to somebody. I, I, I fed a homeless person. Those are all good things, but those things do not make you righteous. You do those things because you have become righteousness. Any man in Christ, he has now become the righteousness of God in Christ. Your old man is dead. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So we're not justified before God by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. 
And so here it is in Romans 3.21 again, the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. So we get righteous not by the works of a law, not by we do good, so therefore we are good. No, we become good by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Therefore, therefore we start doing good because the tree has changed. The old tree that produced bad fruit is dead is crucified with Christ. We have now our trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And by the way, it's not ourselves that make, we don't make ourselves righteous. It's God who makes us right. It's Jesus Christ and God himself who sent Jesus to make us right with himself and to make us into being trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. Now, one more thing I want to say about this, and that is that we become righteous by believing and not by doing, okay? So we've been talking about works do not produce righteousness. Righteousness produces good works. But we become righteous by believing. That's what we're talking about when we talk about the righteousness of faith. For those of you that are jumping in at this point in the video, I'm talking about that overcomers understand the righteousness of faith. Those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. So if you want to be an overcomer, you have to understand the righteousness that comes by faith because righteousness by works is our works is filthy rags before God. It's just not ever going to measure up. So we become righteous by believing and not by doing. By the way, I'll leave my uh, a link for my YouTube channel there. Uh, also, uh, I'll leave a link of maybe a recent video so you can go go to my YouTube channel, which is Fred Crop K R O P P. When you get there, click subscribe, click the bell, and click like, and you can catch up on all of these videos on the Overcomer series. All right, back to what we're talking about here. So. We become righteous by believing, not by doing. Let me just share a couple of scriptures about that. Romans chapter 4, verse 5, it says this. This is the Apostle Paul. He says, but to him who does not work, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is, a, is accounted for righteousness. Now, people are going to have a struggle with this. Well, do you mean I can just have faith and I can just go out and sin all I want, but because I have faith, that means I'm right with God? No, if you are truly righteous, if you understand that you are the righteousness of God, righteous people do righteousness, right? Sinners do sin. You were, once I was a sinner, but Jesus set me free, right? Uh, and uh, once I was, I had my old man, which was corrupt and full of all kinds of evil, but now I have my new man, my new man in Christ. And so, well, what's this? Why do I still feel these temptations and all these things? Because you still live in the flesh, and your flesh, the Bible says, in your flesh dwells no good thing. But Paul says, but you are not in the flesh, this is Romans chapter 8, but in the spirit, if Christ Jesus dwells in you. So if you have been born again, born into, so you're born into sin, but you must be born again into righteousness. So you were born into Adam, which means you were born into sin. You became a sinner. But when you were born again, you're born into Jesus Christ. You're born again into Christ. And now you are the righteousness of God in Christ. I hope you're getting this. I know I'm really hammering away at it, but I want you to get this. It's so important because overcomers understand how to live in the righteousness of faith. And how do we do that? We do that by believing, not by doing. In Romans chapter 9, verse 30 and 32 to 32, it says this, what shall we say then? The Gentiles, talking about non-Jews, who did not pursue righteousness, have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, has not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, but by, as it were, by works of the law. Do you see? That's pretty clear. Here, he, Paul is writing, he says, the Israelites were trying to attain righteousness by the works of the law, but they did not attain righteousness because they were trying to do it. Now, why does not the works of the law work? Because you, if you're, you're a sinner, you have not been born again, you can't produce righteousness. No matter how hard you try, if you ever 
church I, you know, said, I'm not going to do that sin. I'm not going to do that sin. I'm, I'm going to do a good thing. I'm going to do a good thing. And you fail every time over and over. Even, no matter how many times you say, you know what, uh, I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better. That doesn't make you do better. It's when you begin to realize the person that you have now become in Christ. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. All things have become new. And so it's more, we have to believe what God's word says about us. And so here it says, the Gentiles, the non-Jews who did not pursue righteousness have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness of faith. And then it goes on and says, but Israel pursuing the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness. Why? Because they did not seek it by faith, Paul says, Romans 9, 30 to 32, but as it were, by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone. Jesus is the stone of stumbling, right? In Titus chapter 3, verse 5, it says, Not by works of righteousness, Paul says, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. He's talking about being born again. Not by works of righteousness, not the things that I've done, not the good things that I've done, not, not, not that I'm better than my neighbor, not that I go to church on Sunday, but I'm, I, I do not have a righteousness of my own, uh, but it might not by works of righteousness, which I have done, but according to his mercy. Thank God for the mercy of God and through the salvation of Jesus Christ, which makes me right with God, makes me righteous before God. Romans 10 verse 3 says, talking about Israel, it says, being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. This is why it's so important that you believe and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Lord in your life. Put your faith in Jesus. It's only by putting your faith in Jesus Christ who came to pay the price for our sins, died on the cross, was buried. Three days later, he rose again from the dead, and it says he was, he was crucified for our sin, but he was raised for our justification. When Jesus got up out of the grave, and that he he gave us now the right to be justified before God. For everyone who believes in him will be made right with God, have right standing with God. And by the way, you don't stop having right standing with God after you get born again. You got to then walk by faith. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. So you cannot get saved, be born again by Jesus' righteousness and by the blood of Jesus, and then you're going to live your life on your own, in your own strength and own ability, and your own, uh, you know, ability to produce righteousness. No, you have to continue to live by faith in Jesus Christ. We, it's by faith that we walk in righteousness. In Romans 9, verse 31, it says, but Israel pursued a law that would lead to righteousness, but they did not succeed in reaching that law. Well, I'm going to stop right there because I just want to take a little bit of time and I want to pray for you at the end of this session because you know what? I understand that I just gave a lot of information to you regarding what is righteousness and how do we have the righteousness. Remember I talked about at the beginning of this video, and those that are watching right now, you want to go back to the beginning and watch it. I talked about four kinds of righteousness, and only one of them makes you right with God. I talked about the righteousness of the law, how you have to keep the law perfectly or else you are condemned. The righteousness of association, where you think, well, because I go to church or I know some Christians or my grandma was a, was a saint, uh, therefore I made right with God, that doesn't work either. There is no righteousness by association. Then, of course, I talked about self-righteousness, where you compare yourself to other people. I'm a good person compared to who? I'm a good person because I don't tell as many lies as everybody else. I haven't, uh, you know, lusted as much as everybody else. I haven't been angry as much as everybody else. I haven't hurt anybody as much as everybody else. You know, if I've, if I've done any of those things, then the Bible says I'm unrighteous. I'm an unrighteous sinner. And so we're born into sin and we get born again into righteousness. So self-righteous. Then the last one, which is what I just explained, I'm going to go on in the next session to talk more about the only righteousness that will make you 
have right standing with God, keep you right with God, and get you into heaven when you go to be with God, or you go on to the next life. And that is the righteousness of faith. All right, but before I pray for you, I just want to, one more time, just remind you of our seminar on July 23rd, Saturday, July 23rd. It's called Activate. And I want to encourage you to go and click on the link in the chat or click, if you're watching by YouTube, click on the link below and register register for our seminar. It's going to be powerful. It's a half-day seminar, and it's not just like a half-day of a bunch of teaching. It's going to be a half-day of impartation where you're going to have receive impartation about how to activate the God who lives in you, God who lives in you, activate your identity in Christ and activate your love for people that you come encounter uh, and you encounter in your everyday life. So I want to invite you to join us. Make sure again now that you go to my YouTube channel also and click subscribe, click the bell and click like. All right, I want to pray for you in closing and um, and thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. I get so many comments from so many people that let me know that they're watching my videos and how they're being helpful. I got challenged to do this a couple of years ago right at the beginning of COVID. Uh, somebody challenged me to start producing videos that would help Christians to grow and be strong in their faith. That's what my heart is, is to help you. And by the way, uh, also, I'll put a link there. I've written a book called One Simple Act of Obedience. And uh, make sure uh, that you go to Amazon and get my book because it will really help you to walk in the things that I share with you. It's called One Simple Act of Obedience by Fred Kropp. All right. All right. Let me pray for you. And then we're going to close this session. Father, I thank you so much for everyone that's watching. I ask for the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. I pray, God, that we begin to understand the righteousness of faith and how we can walk in righteousness, not because we're trying to be righteous, but because we are righteous, the righteousness of God in Christ. I pray that over everyone watching. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Make sure you tune in next time. I'm going to talk more about the righteousness of faith, which is the overcomer's ability to walk in righteousness.